An old video shows a U.S. Air Force commander explaining all their efforts to identify and analyze the recent phenomenon known as UFOs, assuring reporters it has nothing to do with any secret projects as rumored. One of the majors even wrote a book about it and points out that extraterrestrial life shouldn't be taken lightly. In a small town in Pennsylvania, a family is having dinner when suddenly the house starts trembling and a huge explosion happens outside, making them lose power and knocking the family out. When they wake up, they begin hearing some weird noises and become incredibly sick. One by one, each family member dies while the youngest girl rushes to hide in the cupboard. Meanwhile Nobel Prize winner and NASA exobiologist Lauren is in her home after getting arrested for driving while drunk. Now she takes medicine for her depression, yet she keeps on drinking. Tonight she's watching the news and learns of the explosion, although there's no explanation for it yet. A reporter explains that the explosion left no survivors and the air is considered toxic, so the area has been closed and nobody goes in without a hazmat suit. Sometime later, some soldiers show up at Lauren's apartment and ask her to come to the site of the explosion because they need her expertise, threatening her with violence if she doesn't agree. When she gets there, she meets an astrobiologist named David and Colonel Emmerich, who explains that the explosion and the released toxic gas were caused by a meteorite that somehow dissolved into the ground. He wants Lauren and David to investigate the area and hopefully offer a solution. Once they've put on the hazmat suits, Lauren and David are taken on a bus to the site of the meteorite crash. David thinks there's nothing interesting, but Lauren discovers a small red plant growing in the middle of the crater. She's fascinated by it, but she doesn't include it in her report. In the evening, Lauren is at home and can't stop looking at a picture of the strange plant. She searches the web for stories of other meteorite crashes and finds a video of a similar incident in Russia. Something fell on Earth, and then the area was closed up because the air was toxic. A citizen who knows someone in the military explains that Russia kept this information hidden because the object that fell was a seed, and some kind of tree grew out of it which killed everything in its surroundings, including plants and animals. The Russian government already destroyed the tree, and the woman in the video was shot in front of her kids a few days later. There are lots of pictures from concerned citizens discussing theories about the barricaded town and the fact neighboring places were being evacuated too. In the end, the town was incinerated. The next day, two doctors get ready to perform an autopsy on Rob, the father from the beginning. Rob's skin appears too normal for a dead person and there isn't the usual stiffness either. When the doctor makes the first incision, a strange glowing liquid starts coming out of the body, only to quickly be reabsorbed until the wound heals itself. Suddenly Rob sits up and one of the doctors flees in fear while another one tries to communicate with him, but he won't move or talk. The doctor checks his pulse and discovers there's no blood or blood pressure, and the body is rather cold. At that moment everyone's phones start ringing at the same time and see a bunch of employees running down the corridor. They go to check what's happening and discover that some of the dead people from the toxic town are now standing. Soon the rumors spread and lots of reporters appear outside the facility discussing possible theories and the actions of religious groups. Lauren isn't taking it well, but she refuses any help from David. The doctors try to get the dead people to react by showing them pictures of their families, but nothing happens. After some testing, they theorize that only 49 bodies have been reanimated from the 1,300 dead people because of their proximity to the meteorite crash. They inhaled the toxic air and also particles from the meteorite, which seemed to be transforming their internal organs. Sometimes these resurrected people suddenly move, but it's only to face a different direction. When Lauren meets with Emmerich, she mentions the incident in Russia and says they're probably connected, but Emmerich is wary because she got her information from the dark web. Later at a White House meeting, a full report is presented on the reanimated people. They have no heartbeat and no brain activity. They don't breathe, eat, or sleep. Their organs contain unfamiliar compounds and their DNA has been mutated into a different life, probably alien. The same new sequence is repeated in each victim, which shows this isn't random. A military leader proposes incinerating the bodies, so Lauren shares her theory about Russia and points out that maybe they're being targeted. If they don't find an answer, a big city may be attacked next. Since her proof is only internet pictures that may have been edited she isn't taken seriously, but the president still votes against incineration and orders the scientists to keep studying the bodies. This whole situation makes Lauren's depression worse and she ends up drinking alone in her car while remembering her childhood. Her father had taken her to a secret location and asked her to keep it secret from everyone, including her mom. However the memory ends there because she suffers from amnesia. This leaves her so upset that Lauren ends up mixing her medicine with the alcohol. Afterward Lauren goes back to the facility, where the doctors are allowing the relatives to talk to the bodies, but it still gets no reaction. Desperate for answers, Lauren goes to the room where all the reanimated bodies are, and shows a little girl her favorite childhood book while sharing the story of her mother's death, admitting that she didn't cry. At that moment she gets a call from David and when she grabs her phone, a picture of the crater plant can be seen as the wallpaper. This causes the girl to suddenly grab Lauren's arm. She immediately tells Emmerich and David about it, and David finally realizes that the bodies turn to always look north where the crater is. Their chat is interrupted when a soldier reports that information leaked and now news outlets are showing pictures of the giant tree-like structure that has grown out of the crater in just two days. 
Taking Rob in a secure box, the scientists fly to the crash site and admire the strange tree, which is responsible for making the area toxic. The group sits Rob in front of the tree and after a long moment of waiting, he gasps and opens his eyes, which now are a very bright blue. Then he starts looking around as if seeing everything for the first time, his own hands, the tree, the snow. Guessing he's an alien now, Lauren welcomes him to Earth, and Rob explains he can't go back with the team because he won't survive the normal Earth environment. Afterward during a press conference, Lauren explains the same way Earth's plants provide oxygen for humans, that tree is life-giving for these aliens. The current theory is that the aliens reach Earth by traveling through wormholes. Some reporters try to derail the conversation by asking Lauren about her arrest, which is seen on TV by a mysterious man. Later at home, Lauren hears a message from her therapist, who is worried because she has been missing sessions and they're part of the court order. She's also interested in discussing Lauren's flashback dreams which often include flying. Lauren ignores the message and grabs lunch until she hears knocking on the door, it's her father Jim. He makes Lauren feel very awkward and she doesn't say much, but Jim keeps talking, mentioning how as a child Lauren was obsessed with space and asked for her own lab, which they built in the shed. Jim says he's lonely and that he misses her, but Lauren avoids being hugged and stays cold, so Jim just leaves. Soon Lauren is called to the toxic area again because the alien refuses to talk to anyone except her. Once she's suited up, Lauren sits with Rob, who explains that his home planet became uninhabitable and forced his species to seek a new world. This tree won't grow anywhere else, and they were given the coordinates to reach Earth by a human called Supernova 94. This person sent messages to space with the purpose of finding them, even giving them a list of humanity's strengths and weaknesses. At that moment the scientists try to take a sample from the tree and Rob asks Lauren to make it stop, but she can't. Lauren explains they won't let the tree stand for much longer because it's damaging Earth's environment, but Rob says his people will change the environment. He also reveals he has special abilities before taking control of a scientist's body to make him open his hazmat suit. A few guards rush to tackle the man down while others surround Rob, demanding for this to stop while they take Lauren away. Rob's eyes turn black and the scientist breaks a soldier's mask, causing him to quickly become infected and cough up blood until he dies. The other soldiers get ready to shoot Rob, but he uses his powers again and a screeching sound causes everyone to squirm on the ground in unbearable pain while all the lights go out. The suffering drives the soldiers crazy and they remove their masks before they start attacking each other with no mercy. One by one all the soldiers are killed by bullets or knives from their own teammates, and when only one is left standing, the soldier self-deletes. After a truck arrives to take away the bodies and the scientists including Lauren, the military launches an attack against the tree, only to discover it's being protected by a huge force field. The missiles explode against it without causing any damage to the tree, and the planes have no choice but to retreat. Soon, news outlets begin talking about the force field and the name Supernova 94. The mysterious man is shocked to hear such a name on the radio and goes looking for an old notebook of his in which he wrote the same word. Sometime later, reporters begin recording various weird incidents from all over the world. A strange sound can be heard in some cities, while a mysterious fog is spreading through certain towns and killing people. Martial law has been declared in multiple countries, and to make matters worse, crops have been dying overnight. There are also reports of the ground vibrating, and people are starting to panic. Meanwhile Lauren decides to return to her childhood home. Her old lab is still there, but it's locked up. Jim is indeed lonely and sitting in his room in a very depressed state, but instead of visiting him, Lauren keeps on traveling. She feels like she doesn't know who she is and that she doesn't belong anywhere, she's also aware that the world is ending yet she feels relief as if she was being put out of her misery. Eventually Lauren returns to the alien tree, which has been transforming more. Suddenly the ground starts shaking and Lauren puts her ear on the snow, hearing the same strange noises. Rob says it's life growing and then reveals that this is all happening thanks to Lauren, offering his hand for her to touch. As soon as Lauren grabs Rob's hand, she begins seeing her suppressed memories. It turns out Jim used to work for a senator and he took Lauren to Area 51. While the adults discussed business, little Lauren wandered around and overheard them talk about an alien that landed on Earth, who could fly but didn't survive the local environment. Apparently the creature had been trying to plant something on Earth. Curious, she went further inside and found the alien inside the pout, which she didn't hesitate to touch. This contact triggered a process that transferred the alien's consciousness into Lauren's body and mutated her DNA, making her an alien too like it happened to Rob in the present. As soon as she returned home, little Lauren began showing amazing intelligence, writing complicated calculations on the wall and even designing a rocket. She kept saying that she was an alien and that she wanted to go home, but nobody believed her, and that's how she became very awkward and socially isolated. Eventually she built a radio and started sending messages to the aliens using the nickname Supernova 94 inspired by her space calendar. When her mother discovered all this, she locked up the shed and forbade her from sending out more messages to strangers. Furious, Lauren destroyed her whole room and wrote on the walls before telling her mother that she'd die a most horrible death. It was her alien abilities that killed her mom. Afterward Jim let government scientists run some tests on Lauren and they found the alien DNA mixed with hers, but Jim didn't tell her anything. 
In the present, Lauren is crying over recovering her memories when suddenly Rob removes her mask. To her shock, she can breathe the toxic air because of her mutated DNA. Meanwhile the mysterious man also remembers his younger days, revealing he used to work for the CIA and he accidentally picked up Lauren's messages with his equipment. He tried to warn his superiors, but they brushed it off as just a girl playing around. In a random forest, a dog runs among the trees to follow the weird noises. When its owner follows it, she's shocked to see a huge egg-like pod that emerged from the ground, explaining the noises. Soon these things appear all over the world, from beaches to mountains and even human-made tunnels. Suddenly all these objects explode at the same time and expel a black smoke that starts spreading through the land and killing people. Everyone begins talking about aliens, and a teenager theorizes the pods have roots underground connected to the main tree, which killed the crops. Eventually Earth can no longer support life for humans and one by one every person on the planet dies as the environment mutates to be alien-friendly. The only survivor is Lauren, who has finally found her wings.